Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning about J.J. Thompson's experiment to find the charge to mass ratio of an electron. Here we can see a replica of the experimental setup that he used. Now, in 1897, as we know, Thompson deflected the cathode rays with an electric field. We can see that happening in a diagram over here. This showed that cathode rays were made of electrons. Now he later conducted an experiment to discover the charge to mass ratio of the electron, which we'll be learning about today. Now as we know, a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field moves in a circle, as we can see over here. The centripetal force in the particle is given by QVB equals MV squared on R, which I'm sure you remember. Now from this, we can derive an expression for the charge to mass ratio on the particle. So, starting with QVB equals MV squared on R, we can divide both sides by BV, which gets rid of them from this side of the equation, and moves the B to the bottom of this one. And then we can, multi uh, we can divide both sides by M to get the charge to mass ratio on this side. We can also see this equation down here. So that means that if we have a particle moving in a circle, we can find its charge to mass ratio by looking at the radius of the circle, the strength of the field, and knowing the velocity of the particle. So how do we find the velocity? Well, the strength of the magnetic force in a charged particle depends on its velocity. We know this already. The equation for it is F equals QVB, and the V here is what we're interested in. On the other hand, the strength of the electric force on a charged particle is not dependent on its velocity. If you recall, the equation for its force is F equals QE. There's no V in there. So, suppose we take both of these setups and we put them together so that we end up with something like this. We have a beam of electrons going perpendicular to E and perpendicular to B. We can adjust the strengths of the fields until the electrons are not deflected by the fields at all. So, algebraically we can write that the sum of the forces is zero, and this means that the magnitude of the forces must be equal, one in one direction and one in the other. Now, substituting the expressions for the forces on each, from each uh, field, we have QE equals QVB. Dividing through both by Q, and then uh, through by B, we end up with the expression V equals E on B. That means that if a charged particle is going through an electric field and a magnetic field undeflected, we can find its velocity simply by dividing the strength of the electric field by the strength of the magnetic field. So this is what Thompson decided to do. Uh, his experimental setup looks something like this. He used a specially heated thermionic cathode to give off lots of electrons. Uh, and he had an anode over here with a hole in its center. The electrodes given off the cathode would move toward the anode, and some of them would strike the anode, but others would go through the hole in the middle, producing a thin beam of electrons. Well, where do the electrons go after that? In the other side of the apparatus, we had a pair of charged parallel plates to electrically deflect the beam of electrons. We also had a pair of Helmholtz coals uh, Helmholtz coils, which would produce a magnetic field over here. So the charge deflection plates would produce an electric field, and the Helmholtz coils would produce a magnetic field, which is exactly what we need for the experiment. A fluorescent screen was placed at the end, and the beam of electrons would produce a dot in it. This dot would move upwards or downwards, depending on which of these it was being most deflected by. So with everything set up, Thompson balanced the two fields so that the dot remained undeflected at the end of the tube. He was therefore able to determine the velocity of the electrons using, as we know, V equals E on B. Having determined the velocity of the electrons, uh, Thompson could then calculate the charge to mass ratio of the electron. He concluded that the electrons were much smaller than atoms because the charge was so high for such a small mass. From this he concluded that the electrons were a subatomic particle, the first ever subatomic particle to be discovered. He believed that they were the building blocks of atoms, 
but we'll learn more about that a little later on. This concludes the theory. In this section, we have studied J.J. Thompson's experiment, what he hoped to learn from it, his setup, and what he concluded from the results. Now let's go on to some questions. Question 4. In which order do the electrons travel through his apparatus? Well, right away, we can see that A is not going to be the right answer. Electrons are created at the cathode, not at the anode. So it can't be this. What about option B then? Cathode, parallel plates, anode, screen. Well, the electrons pass through the hole in the anode before they reach the parallel plates. Otherwise, there'd be a very wide beam and we wouldn't be able to observe much deflection. So it can't be B. Well, option C then. Uh, cathode, anode, screen, parallel plates. The problem here is as soon as the electron hits the screen, it stops moving, so we'd never be able to get to the parallel plates. So this can't be the right answer either. And finally, D. Cathode, anode, parallel plates, screen. This is the right answer because the electron beam has to pass through the parallel plates and be deflected before it hits the screen. So, D is the correct answer. On to question 5. Compare qualitatively the paths taken by a proton and by an electron when they enter this magnetic field at equal velocity. Now we can use the right hand rule to determine which direction they'll be deflected in. For the proton, the positive charge velocity is this way, the magnetic field is towards you, so the force it experiences is downward. Therefore, we can figure out the proton must be deflected downwards. The electron, on the other hand, has a positive charge velocity in the other direction because it's a negative particle. The magnetic field is the same, and so it's deflected upwards. But we can't really draw their paths until we know something about the radius of the path they're following. So we can use our old equation r equals mv on qb to look at the difference between the path's radii. We know that the velocity of both particles is the same, because right here. The magnetic field is the same for both particles, and the charges, although they're opposite, are equal. The one thing that will change, depending on the particle then, is the mass. We know that the proton has a much larger mass than the electron, so the path that follows will have a much larger radius. The path that they follow, if I drew them on the diagram, would look something like this. The proton with a very large radius, and the electron with a very small radius. On to the next question. In this diagram, find the strength of the electric field between the parallel plates if the distance between them is 10 millimeters and the voltage between the plates is 20 volts. The relevant equation here is E equals V on D. We can substitute 20 volts in for V and 10 millimeters in for D. Once we do that, the equation looks something like this. We can put that into a calculator and it evaluates to 2000 volts per meter. So that's the strength of the electric field between the two plates. Part B. If the electric field strength is 2000 volts per meter, which we found, the, the magnetic field strength is 0 0.001 tesla, and the electron is undeflected, how fast is it moving? Now, as you recall, the equation for the velocity of an undeflected uh, electron is given by this, V equals E on B. We know the strength of the electric field, E, and we know the strength of the magnetic field, B. And so, substituting these into the expression, we went with 2000 divided by 0 0.001 which we can evaluate on a calculator to find our answer, 2 million meters per second. That's quite fast. Question 7. An electron is traveling at 2 million meters per second in magnetic field. It follows a circular path with a radius of 1.14 centimeters. If the magnetic field strength is 0.001 tesla, as before, find the charge to mass ratio of the electron. The relevant equation here is Q over M equals V over RB. We can substitute 1.14 centimeters as the radius, 2 million meters per second as the velocity, and 0 0.001 tesla as the magnetic field strength. After we substitute these, it looks something like this. Now at first you might think this doesn't look like 1.14, but remember, this is a measurement given in centimeters, and it has to be converted into meters before it can be used in the equation.
putting this into a calculator, we end up with the result 1.75 times 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kilogram. This concludes this section. In this section, we have covered J.J. Uh, Thompson's experiment, what he hoped to learn from it, what he did learn from it, and the various parts that were used in his setup.